I'm Gretchen Men, and welcome to a collaboration I'm doing with Breed Love Guitars to show you how I play this beautiful piece by Jimmy Page. I learned it not only because I play in Zepparella, a band that honors the music of the mighty Led Zeppelin, but also because it's just a totally beautiful piece of music, and it's really graceful and rewarding to play. This is part two in a series that I'm doing with Breed Love on an introduction to finger picking. These lessons are intended to help newer or intermediate players primarily, but they could also be helpful for more experienced players who are maybe newer to finger picking. Part one in this series, which we'll link below, covers some basics of hand position and tone and finger independence and walks you through a series of exercises which are intended to help prepare you to play this tune and can serve as a good foundation. I do encourage you to first check that out and work through the exercises as they'll really expedite the learning process here. Even if you're a more experienced player, all I can say is I have yet to reach a level where periodic review of basic and fundamental concepts don't provide some sort of new insight. So keep a beginner's mind and that'll really help you maximize learning. In researching for this video, I confronted an insecurity I've always had with this piece, and it's not so much how to play it as how to pronounce it. I discovered this is actually rather a debated point, and there are forums with long threads with widely varying opinions from people who all sound really confident. Wikipedia says the pronunciation for the Welsh word is Pronerair. and Robert Plant pronounced it totally differently at a show in 1973. Uh, this is a thing called Pronerair. And I even had one of my friends who has a family member who is Welsh show me how she would pronounce it. Pronerair is a chest of gold. So it's called Pronerair. So really, I have no idea how to pronounce it, but luckily, I do know how to play it. So with that out of the way, here's an overview of the lesson. What I'll be showing you here is the way I play this song. The physical graffiti recording has little Jimmy-ish idiosyncrasies, so if you're intent on playing it exactly like the recording, this lesson will get you most of the way there, and then I encourage you to add any smaller details as you hear them. An app like Transcribe, which is one of my main resources for really being specific about learning stuff by ear, is great if you want to get forensic about it. So before we get started, it is my pleasure to introduce this gorgeous Breed Love. It's a Koa Pursuit exotic concert. Breed Love instruments are excellent guitars for finger picking, and to be sure, they're great with a pick as well, but they're versatile, they're balanced, and they're really responsive to the gentler attack of fingers. Because we're in an open tuning, I'm going to be referring to string numbers, 1 through 6, rather than note names, as calibrating for the open tuning is just going to be way too confusing. And I'll be using the traditional way of referring both to fretting and picking hand fingers. Fretting hand will be 1, 2, 3, and 4, and picking hand will be P for thumb, I for index, M for middle, A for ring. And I'll be going through each section in this format. I'll demonstrate it slowly. I'll break it down for you, and then I'll demonstrate it closer to at tempo. And doing it this way without a lot of built-in repetition will help keep this video a more reasonable length, and you can always repeat sections and even slow down the playback speed on YouTube. I encourage you to start working on any new song with some active listening. I've labeled my sections based on what made sense to me, but you can label them however makes sense to you. But I will be referring to these sections as I've labeled them as we break down the piece. If you have the music really well in your ears and in your brain, it'll be much easier to learn. And then I suggest making a simple structure chart. This is a plain language description of the sections of the tune and requires really no music theory. Here's how I'd do one for Bronnerer. Let's get tuned up. I'm using this poly tuner. It's a clip on. I'm going to go from standard to the open tuning. So our low E string will go down to C. I recommend tuning up from a flat because strings can sometimes catch at the net. And now we have A as usual. The D is going to go down to C. G stays the same. The B is going to go up to C. Just a half step. And then E. Now expect to check that a couple of times because when you're tuning this far down, even really good quality instruments need a moment to settle in. So we have C, A, C, G, go up a little bit, C, E. Here's
here's how to play it. You can think of it as two mini sections. Mini section one, slide from the second to the third fret of the fifth string. I'm using my fretting hand middle finger and my picking hand thumb. I'm using a rest stroke here, but you can use a free stroke if you prefer. Then it's the open top strings ascending. So third string with the I, second string with M, first string with A. Mini section two, it's the same right hand pattern, but everything shifts down a string and all open strings. So just sixth string, fourth string, third string, second string, still P-I-M-A. I suggest practicing each of the two sections until both feel comfortable and have a nice tone. Don't move on when you're just getting the mechanics. Make sure things feel good and sound good. This is probably the trickiest section of the piece because there's one little weird thing that if you haven't done it before can feel very awkward. So mini section one, your fretting hand will be at the second fret, first finger on the fifth string, middle finger on the fourth string, open third string, ring finger on the second string. And then the right hand pattern is P and A simultaneously on the fifth and second strings, third with M, fourth with I. So far so good, but now we have the tricky part. Fretting hand stays in position, and the fourth finger frets on the first string, third fret, pulling off to open. But what makes it feel unnatural is you need to hit the fifth string with your thumb, still fretted on the second fret, right at the same time as the pull off with your fourth finger. So like this. If that feels way too weird, you can work toward it by hitting the lower note immediately after the pull off, and then gradually work to bring the two notes closer together. So like this. It will eventually be a breeze, even if it feels odd at first. Then it's the second string with M, fourth and third string simultaneously with P and I, third finger of the fretting hand lifts, and play the open second string with M. So like this so far. Mini section three. We're gonna slide up from the second to the third fret of the fifth string with your second finger hitting it with P. Open fourth string, I. Open sixth and third strings played simultaneously by P and M. Open second string with A. And then it's sixth, fourth, and third with P, I, M. Now we move on to the fourth position. The fretting hand with the second fingers on the fifth string of the fifth fret. The fourth string is open. The first finger is at the fourth fret of the third string, and the second string has your third finger at the fifth fret. The picking pattern is going to be P and A, fifth and second strings, third string with M, fourth string with index, then it's the open first string with A, your fifth string with P, third string with M, fourth string with I, and then the top two strings, M and A. Then you're going to do many section three again. So at tempo, that whole section will sound like. mostly open strings. So we'll start with the middle finger of the fretting hand on the fifth fret of the sixth string. And then we have mini section one, and it's mostly just a right hand picking pattern. So that pattern is going to be P and M on the sixth and third strings, I on the fourth string, P on the fifth string, M on the second string, P on the fifth string, I on the fourth string, open sixth and third strings together. And then we're going to have the open first string with A. Mini section two, we're going to shift positions. And then open third string with I, open second string with M, sixth string, fourth string, third string. Just P, I, M. 
So what that sounds like closer to tempo is... Section C, and then we'll do C prime right after. The picking hand for this section is fortunately very straightforward. It's pretty much exclusively P-I-M-A. For each of these sections, you can break them down into mini sections by each arpeggio, but because the right hand pattern is so continually the same, it might mean you work through a couple of different arpeggios at a time focusing on just smooth, graceful transitions. The first arpeggio, which is the same as the intro, you're going to be on the fifth string, sliding from the second to the third fret with your second finger. So it's going to be P, and then fourth string open with I, third string open with M, second string open with A. The second arpeggio, which is the same as the A section, is going to be fifth string, second fret, first finger with P, fourth string, second fret, second finger with I, third string open with M, second string, second fret, third finger with A. So. So you have so far first and second. Now going between the second and the third arpeggio, notice you're going to have your third finger that's going to stay in common. So I actually use it to slide up to this next position. You're going to be at the fourth position here. And you're going to hit the fifth string with thumb, P, and then the fourth, third, and second strings with I, M, A, all at the fourth fret. For the fourth arpeggio, it's going to be almost the same as the third. What you're just going to do is you're going to lift your ring finger. And what I do is I like to wait until the last minute to move your third finger so that everything still rings out and stays really connected. So third to the fourth arpeggio. Then we have section two, which is really just an extension of this last arpeggio, and it incorporates another little slur, a hammer on and pull off with your fourth finger. Fortunately, the tricky part is something we've already seen in section A, which is hitting a bass note at the same time as a pull off. So it's going to be here at the fourth fret, and you're going to be hitting the fifth string open with P, fourth string, fourth fret, first finger with index, third string, fourth fret, second finger with M, second string, fourth fret, third finger, and hammer on to the, f with, to the fourth finger at the fifth fret, and then you're going to pull off to the next bass note. So. If that feels too weird, do the hammer on, pull off, and then hit the bass note. And then gradually work to bring those together. And then the last little bit of it is it's going to be fifth string, open, P, fourth string, fourth fret, first finger I, third string, fourth fret, second finger M, second string, fourth fret, third finger A, followed by the fourth finger being added the second time through on the fifth string. And this little hammer on pull off with the bass note is going to happen two times before sort of a slowing down of that happens where you just... And then you're going to go up the arpeggio all at the fourth fret, and then you're going to add the fourth finger every other time. And then at the very last one you're going to replace, or at least this is the way I do it, I replace my third finger with my fourth finger so I can get my, my fingers in position to slide up to this D section because the slide's kind of an important part of that sound. The C prime variation is when the section comes back on the repeat and it incorporates just a slur into a different part of the repeated chords. So really it's just a reimagining of what you've already done before. So what you're going to be doing is the same initial arpeggios and then slur. So the slur's there instead of at the repeated chord. repeats three times. So then it's two cycles through these arpeggios, just adding the fourth finger 
every other time. Almost there, and we're at one of the easier sections. So the picking hand pattern is all ascending arpeggios. The first arpeggio, we're gonna start on string six, four, three, and two, all at the fifth fret using fingers one, two, three, and four. And the picking hand pattern is just P, I, M, A. And then for the second arpeggio, we're gonna slide up to the seventh fret and really lean into that slide because it's part of the sound. Um, we're actually not hitting the low string again though. We're just letting it ring out and then I, M. And then we're gonna lift our fourth finger right before hitting that open second string. And then for the third arpeggio, we're going to have the second finger sliding from the second to the third fret on the fifth string. And then it's going to be P, I, M, A on strings five, four, three, and two. And then P, I, M on strings six, four, and three. One thing to be careful of is hitting the lowest string too hard as it'll cause intonation problems. On the last repeat of the D section, instead of going to the third chord, what we're going to do is we're going to hang on the arpeggios that we might recognize from the previous section, but I use a different fingering here. I bar at the fourth fret and then add my second finger every other cycle, like this. And it's P I M A. And then it's this beautifulness. I'm using my pinky on the fifth string, seventh fret, first finger on the fourth string, fifth fret, and then it's open strings, and we're gonna be ascending. So P, I, M, A. And then we're gonna just shift that shape upwards. So now we've got our fourth finger on the seventh fret of the fourth string. Now the right hand stays the same on the fourth, third, second, and first strings, but we're shifting up one more set of strings here with our fourth finger now on the seventh fret of the third string and our first finger on the fifth fret of the second string. So all together. And then if you want to be really specific, I think it's six repeats. chord other than the second finger on the third fret of the fifth string. And you can really let your thumb just rake across those strings and get a nice arpeggio sound. Take your time and stay patient with yourself. Practice slowly and deliberately because quickness and fluency will come naturally if your process is good. Use the metronome to keep you honest. Most importantly though, have fun with it. Remember this video has the various chapters for easy reference so that you can revisit the parts that are more difficult for you. I know we went through things kind of quickly. Once you have each section down, then work to start putting them together and build the whole picture from the smaller parts. Work the transitioning between sections too so that things flow gracefully, not just within the sections. Remember, even big challenges become surmountable with focus and perseverance. You will get it, I know you will, and I'm rooting for you. If this video might have been helpful to you, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps creators be able to continue to provide free educational resources. I'll be doing more videos with Breedlove in the coming months, so keep an eye out and leave a comment if there's something specific you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video. I wish you the very best on your musical journeys. It's an endless and beautiful path. Thank you so much for being here with me.